in his image. All right, so a little different setting here tonight. Okay, so for this video, we're going to study 83 verses. Now, I'm not going to read, obviously, all 83 verses because the majority of all the verses of the word image is mostly graven, molted images, which is just idols. But we're going we're gonna to flush something out here that I think is wildly, I mean, supremely overlooked. It, it truly is. It's going to be as shocking to you as it was to me, because I've been reading the Bible every single day for two and a half years now, a solid two and a half years, seven days a week, hardly ever miss a day. And I missed this one word image and the place where I should have read it didn't exist. All right. So there's just so much assumption, right? When it comes to the word of God, we just take it as truth without looking more deeply. And I'm the number one failure in this since I was stopped when I first started reading the Bible, my first year, first year of reading the Bible every day, all day long. I was stopped most days in my first year of doing nothing other than reading the Bible. I wasn't allowed to get out of chapter one. And once I did get out of Genesis one, and I finally got to Genesis two, and saw this was the actual First time a human with a living soul was made, namely Adam, the first human, Paul tells us, right? In 1 Corinthians 15, 45, and so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Genesis 1 people are not real people with living souls. It's just that simple. The church has got it wrong. Uh, well, of course they do. But anyway, back to Paul. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. That was Jesus. First man was Adam. The second Adam is Jesus. So in Genesis 1, um, with the he, she's, that's what I'm going to call the Genesis 1 people. They're, they're pronoun people. They're he, she's. The he, she's were not given a soul. Only God can do that. In Genesis 1, it was not Father God, Lord God, number 3068. It was not. It was Elohim. In Genesis 1, number 430. So, just a group of angels with supernatural powers to clone a man lookalike, just like they do so well today. They have been doing this for eons, which is why Adam was in an enclosed garden. So, and I very easily also didn't realize until just yesterday when this video was written. Um, today's January 10, 2024. I'm attempting to upload sometime today. We'll see how many days that takes. Anyway, so nowhere, you know, Adam was in an enclosed garden. And so when you pull up the concordance on the word image, there's 83 verses. Now, in it, let's read Genesis 2, 7, and 8. Because the first three or the first two verses of image is Genesis 1. All right, so I've already broken that down. We'll break it down again here in a minute, the number 6754. But first, let's read Genesis 2, 7, and 8. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now, I look at the concordance, and any of these words, meaning when I read Genesis 2, 7, and 8, just in case image is in another word, such as formed, dust, ground, breathe, or breath. I looked up all of those in the concordance. None of those or an alternate meaning of image. Adam was not made in the image of God like we're thinking. I'll get to that. I know it's ruffling tail feathers right now, but just hold on, okay? Don't go anywhere. We're going to see. We're going to flush this out. So the word image is not in Genesis 2 when it concerns Adam. It's not in Adam, and God did not breathe into Eve as well, his breath. He did not. 
Okay, so Adam we know is the first man. So the Genesis 1 image are not the first man with living soul. Now that number again is 6754. It says images of tumors, mice, heathen gods. Image likeness, mere empty image. Mere empty image. They do not have a soul. Now Adam comes through um, in the concordance. He's got two numbers associated to him. The first number is 120 which means man, mankind, human being. So, and then it says in the concordance, Adam is the first man. So Genesis 1, the he, she's are mere empty images, and Adam is the first man. I don't know how the church gets by with their nonsense. Well, however, whatever way they're trying to discount and gloss over this, it's just the snake lies, you know, as they're training their cemetery pastors. So Adam was not made in the image of God. It's simply not there. It says Adam was formed by God. So that is exegetical, what the Bible says. So let's study the word image in all 83 verses. And again, uh, like there's most of the verses are graven and molten. Just go through the concordance. You'll see it for yourself. It has to do with graven and molten images, just people making idols. That's how they made their living. Most of the people in Corinth made their living making idols. It was... It was everywhere. So, but but the word image does have different numbers. And so you do have to actually look at every word image to see how many different numbers. And if we don't study this, the Bible in this way, exegetically, take a word and study a word, then we can get lost in translation, right? Because a word is not usually as simple. For example, and I've said this in other videos, folly actually means rape in the Bible. Folly means rape. So we cannot think folly just means, oh, silliness. Well, it doesn't mean that. So we always have to go to the concordance. So let's not get lost in translation because we want to know the word of God, right? That I do. And that's why I do these videos so we can get the actual truth. You know, we can rightly divine the word, rightly divide the word, divide, divine, you know, tomato, tomato, whatever. So what does God do? Once Adam is formed from the dust of the ground, then follows Eve, or I'm sure, I'm, I'm sorry, once, once Adam followed Eve into sin, the first thing is that Eve was not given breath of life as Adam did. So in Genesis 2, let's read that. Genesis 2 and verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. He slept. He took one of his ribs. He closed up the flesh instead thereof. Verse 22. I'll go ahead and read it down to 24. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of me, out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. So Eve did not get the same treatment from God with the living breath. But Adam knew to have her cleave to him and make Eve bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. No blood here. No blood. In this cleaving, um, and this is my commentary, okay? This is just my thinking out loud here. By this cleaving is how, and becoming one flesh, that's how she got the benefits of Adam's breath of life, a soul. That's just me thinking out loud. It doesn't really tell us anything. All we know is that God did not breathe into her. That's what we know. And so I'm thinking there's a reason for the cleaving um, that they become one flesh. So they have that one soul aspect. And so also because he does not say anything about blood, I believe that they have bodies of living waters because we are going to return to we are going to go back to bodies of living waters. And we're told that in the end of Revelation, when we have our glorified bodies on the second coming. But also, what else was given to them once the fall happened? Now we got to move forward to Genesis 3.21. And let's read that. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. All right, you got to look up skin, right? Now, I never did look up skin before because I just assumed it was an animal hide. It's easy to assume. 
well, I'm learning myself every single day. Don't ever assume. Don't ever, ever, ever assume. That's called eisegesis. Um, that means you're you're uh, you're making an assumption, and then you're going to develop some storytelling or some worldview or some biblical view around an assumption you made. We can't do that. Okay, we're out of time. We don't have time. Storytelling hour is over. All right, skin here is the number five seven eight five. It says skin of men. Adam did not have a skin of man on him. God put a skin to make him look like a man. Now, the second meaning does say skin of animals. But Adam here, the first meaning, when you look at that, first time skin comes up in the Bible, it is skin of men. Now, hold on to that thought. So if Adam already in the accordance was number 120, and then now he becomes number 121. Then here is also the first skin made for the fallen man. So Adam was not made in his image, nor did he have skin. Now, now slow-mo this, what was Adam then? He was a body of light. He was a body of light. He didn't have skin, he didn't have blood. That is all something he took on because he fell out of the garden. He was a body of light. He was made in our Father's image, however, but image is not the same meaning because image is, is reserved for mankind, humans. That's not what Adam was. Adam came from his Father of lights. Okay, let's read that. Father of lights. James 117. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. 1 John 1, 5. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. 1 Timothy 6, 16. Who alone has immortality? Who dwells in, approach in unapproachable light? whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. John 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Psalm 103.13 As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. James 1.13 Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God can not be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. And then, of course, the famous John 3, 16, you guys know that. John 1, 18, no one has ever seen God. The only God who is at our Father's side, he has made him know. So, who really does this image serve? This image serves and makes you worship Elohim. If you have eyes to see and ears to hear, the word image, the first two of 83 verses, is what I already read to you, the number 6754, mere empty. That mere empty serves the Elohim, who made the Hishis. Okay, next it comes in, Generate uh, next time image comes in is Genesis 5, 3. Because Adam is now changed. Adam is now no longer a body light. Adam is now a man, a mere mortal man. And in Genesis 5, 3 is the next time we see image. So when you pull up the concordance, it will go in, in, in order. It will go from the first time that, that that word is in the Bible to the last time. It will be in complete order. So it makes it easy to study a word. So Genesis 5, 3, and here's what it says. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness and after his image and called his name Seth. Do you see here? Adam was not made in God's image as a man. He was a body of light. Then he became, Then God had to put skin on him. And then Seth 
became a man, an image of a man. So this is where mankind takes on image and the likeness of Adam. But that is not what's in the garden. In our original nature, this is, this is the fallen. Mankind, what we look like now, is a fallen image. All right? Once that happened, all of us were no longer upright. We, we fell out of our light bodies and into what I call the supernatural covering that is, that is a covering, right? It's a covering, but it's not God's covering, right? Isaiah tells us that. Let's read Isaiah 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. That is, the driver's done, that is literally talking about two, not only two seed lines, the first line that was made by the fallen angels in Genesis 1, that's, that's what it is. They're Elohim, they're fallen angels, and they made, they made, um, I guess I was a mankind, the he, she's, with skin. And so God did the same thing to Adam when he fell out of his light body and turned upside down. Now, from Genesis 5, 3, the likeness of Adam, now the skin body, the next time it comes in is in Noah. So Noah happens, right? The flood of Noah. And then a new covenant is made by God to Noah in Genesis 9, 6 through 9. Let's read that. Genesis 9, 6 through 9. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For an image of God made he man. And you be ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. So here's the do-over, all right? All of the corrupted images of angels mating with humans and then their offspring mating with everything God ever made, with the birds, the fish, the beasts, the snakes, the reptiles, you name it, they made it with everybody. They mingled their seeds and they're doing it again right now. So here in verse six, the first time it says, once again, the next time, I shouldn't say the first time, but the next time it says image um, is the same, that number in Genesis uh, 126, the number 6754. And here um, in verse six, it says, God made he man. When I read that, the first time I ever read that, it's like, that's not how God speaks. I mean, that's, that's Genesis one talk right there. And you look up God in that verse, and it's H430, Elohim 430. And again, if you want me to read Elohim to you, it means rulers, judges, divine ones, angels, little g gods, god goddesses, godlike. Um, that is not Father God of Genesis 2 that breathed life into Adam. Genesis 2 God is number 3068, Lord God Jehovah. Okay. Next then starts images in Exodus 20, verse 4. Now you can read the concordance on this, but the majority of the images is now on graven and molted images that are, and what it says on that description, they are heathen, empty idols, be it in a household or statues outside of Baal and Asherah and other little G gods. Now, it's not until you get to 2 Chronicles 3.10, where the number of images change to the number 6816. And the number 6816 says, things formed images, sculpted figures. That is of the cherubim. Up until then, it's all false idols after other than the cherubim. Now, once you get, again, I'm just doing images through the concordance. I'm just going down the line here. Once you get all the way down to Job 14, 15 to 21, let's read that. Then a spirit passed before my face, the hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern from the form thereof. An image was before my eyes. 
There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more than be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels be charged with folly. Folly is the number 8417. It means error. In other areas, you'll see that that error, because of the actions that you read that was happening to the first woman who was raped by the giants was, was Dinah. Anyways, when you read that, you understand what's happening there. Error means a bad seed line mixing with the potter's vessels. We don't have time to go into Dinah, but I'll do that some other time. Verse 19, how much less in them that dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the moth? You know that we're the houses of clay, right? I hope you, I hope you picked up on that. Potter's vessels. We are houses of clay whose foundation is in the dust. We, potter's vessels, are just like Adam. Clay, dust, and will be crushed before the moth. Okay, house here is number uh, 1004. And it means house, dwelling, habitation, shelter or abode of animals and human bodies, of Sheol, of abode of light and darkness, of land, Ephraim. Back to Job 4, and let's finish this out. Verse 20, they are destroyed from morning to evening. They perish forever without any regarding it. Does not their excellency, which is in them, go away? They die, even without wisdom. So if you're struggling right now to understand the purpose of this video on the word image, then I ask you just please pause the video right now and read Psalm 73. I can't go through all of that. I've got to keep these as short as I can. Psalm 73 will summarize this. If you want to understand, spend some time, don't gloss over and really read Psalm 73. It's all right there. Now I'm going to highlight the one word we're studying in which image is in that psalm. So psalm, this psalm is the anchor. Once you get past the truth of Adam and you read this psalm with that understanding of Genesis 1 images, okay, so let's read that. The one verse that has the word image is in verse 20. Psalm 73, 20. As a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, Thou shalt despise their image. Now, does our father hate his image? Does he despise his image? Do you see the lies? Do you see the, the theft, the counterfeit? Do you see the devil in the details here? Do you see the supernatural that is our skin that Father God put on Adam after he fail, f fell? And how important it is, the devil's seed line? of his offspring. And if you're really into the whole alien ET, you know, loop, you know about the race of aliens, whatever, they're a race of hybrids, but you know, people call them aliens, whatever, whatever. They've got 20 names. It doesn't matter. But there's a race of them that specialize in peeling your face off. They have hoverboards. They just recently uh, landed in Peru and there was footage, caught footage that made it onto the internet of somebody's face who had been, well, just muscle left, but the actual skin of the face was peeled off. And they, they allowed that to get onto the internet. All right, so now as you're coming down, you'll find in Daniel, the word image is 14 times. And it's all, all 14 verses. I've read, I've read all 83 verses now. So I'm just trying to summarize, but all 14 verses, or I should say 14 times, image is used in Daniel. It's all on Nebuchadnezzar's statue. It's not until Romans 8.20 do we get the true image. The true image. I want you to hear that. It is not until Romans 8.20 do we get to understand the image of God. All right. That number is 1504. Surprisingly, it equals a 10. That means God's perfect government made manifest. So here we read um, Romans. 
um, what I have here. Romans 8, 29, I picked down here. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Again, this number here, image, has now changed. That's why you can't assume image means image. It doesn't. It always has different numbers when it needs to. And that number again is 1504. Let's listen to the description now of the image of Jesus. An image of things, the heavenly things, used of the moral likeness of renewed men to God. The image of the Son of God into which true Christians are transformed is likeness not only to the heavenly body, but also to the most holy and blessed state of mind which Christ possesses. The image of one, one in whom the likeness of anyone is seen applied to man on account of his power of command. To Christ, on account of his divine nature and absolute moral excellence. Now stack that up with Genesis 1 account. Just stack that up with Genesis 1 and see what you walk away with. For Jesus is in our image. The point is the lies of the snakes around us. They look like us and it's all idolatry. When you follow your fan, any human, for any reason, it's all snake worshiping. That is what we are really being told, not by the church. It takes the Holy Spirit in you to see with eyes to see. Now later, Paul's going to tell us in 1 Corinthians eleven seven, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as, as, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Here image is also 1504 just like Jesus. Is that not the coolest thing? I hope you guys are, ex <laughs> are as excited as I get about this stuff. Anyway, so the next word image found is also the number 1504. And we'll end with this one. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 45 to 54. And so it is written that the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. Did you, I, did I say that too fast? The first man is of the earth, earthy, that was Adam. The second man is the Lord from heaven, that's Jesus. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. We're born as a man. We were born because Adam fell, was given skin. We're born as earth, clay, potter's vessels. What we will return as Adam once was. Before he followed Eve into sin, he, we will return to our glorified bodies of light. Paul's trying to describe a concept that to the Jewish culture and mindset was just absolutely, um, it, it, it was, you know, I wanted to say it was Greek to them. They actually talked Greek. <laughs> they actually spoke Greek. So what do I say? It's, it's Chinese to them? I don't even know. It, it made no sense. And it's so, it's, it's why Paul's teach all of the apostles' teachings were so easily manipulated to contort and fit their worldview and desires. And the church just has been corrupt since Paul left. Since Paul left Cyprus, since Paul left Corinth, since he left Ephesus, since he left Galatia, and on and on and on. Verse 50, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so you see that blood? Blood. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Well, we never had blood to begin with. That's a satanic thing. That's because of the fall. Our living waters became blood. And that's why the Satanists drink it. They're trying to capture the human soul. Life is in the blood. They're trying to get a soul. That's all that's about. They're trying to get what we, potter's vessels with the soul, they want just 
1% of our experience. They want to understand who and what we are because they can't, they can't comprehend it. They're soulless, snakeless, spineless liars. And they make up the elite of this world. You want to talk about the swamp? You think you're draining the swamp? Only Jesus is draining the swamp. Okay. The swamp won't be drained until Jesus comes back. Period. I don't care what your political agenda is. Period. That's when the swamp will be drained. Get off the white hat. BS. Let me re re repeat verse 50. Now this I say, brethren. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. They will not inherit a glorified body. They are already corrupt. They've been corrupt since Genesis 1. They were here before we were. And they'll be the tares, uh, the first ones to be put in the fire. 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. That's us in the flesh into our glorified body in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall all be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality thank you jesus so when this corruptible should have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Let me go now to Colossians 3.10. And have put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Do you see there? Again, that's number 1504. That's number 1504. It has nothing to do about looking like a human. It has everything to do about being in your glorified body of light. It says it right there again. Paul says it in a different way. I'll repeat it. Colossians 3.10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Let's close out with Hebrews 10.1, which is also the number. And the last time you find the number 1504 in the Bible is Hebrews 10.1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year continually, make the comers thereunto perfect. So, after, after this, all right, when that ends, Hebrews 10.1, every other verse that has image in it is on the image of the beast. So you see, Adam was not an image of a man. He was a being of light. And once the devil through Eve made him fall upside down, he was given by God the Father the same skin in which the first man of Genesis 1 um, did not have. Okay, they, those people in Genesis 1, they did not have them. They were made in the image of the Elohim. And read it again. Go back and read Genesis 1. Let us make man in our image. Now, that's that's they're saying. They're angels. The he, she's. He, she, they, them. All right. That was after the Elohim. Well, what are the Elohim? They're seraphs. What is a seraph? It's a fiery flying serpent with six wings. And they stand the closest to God right before his throne. And one third of them, because the devil, Satan, their leader, was above them because Satan is the covering cherub. Satan was above the crown, the head of God. And Satan was calling down to a third of the seraphs who are very powerful. Talk about an army, seraphims. You're not, wait till the dragons are flying around. All right, they made their offspring in Genesis 1 flying Flying, fiery serpents. Now, they did they degrade just down to lizard people and snake people? Do they still have the power of fire? I don't know. Do they still have wings? I don't know. But are they, are they fiery serpents? Absolutely. They're seraphs. Seraph is singular. Seraphim is plural. And they 
Once they saw that Adam had this supernatural skin, all they had to take was pieces of it and they could make it self-replicate over and over and over and they could cover themselves with it. They have, they have tech, they have supernatural abilities. They could take the mortal skin of Adam and make it supernaturally evolved into what they needed it to be to cover who they are. I know I'm probably ruffling some tail feathers right now, but that's what is, that's what's happening. The devil had to, uh, what's the word I want? Hide, shade, cover with his covering, his evil covering. They took the supernatural skin that God put on Adam and Eve and they just cut pieces of, they didn't need that much. They don't need that much DNA to make a whole, you know, a whole host of skin suits. They don't, it only takes a little bit of DNA for them to make a whole lot of skin suits. And that's what they did. Now, if you want to, you want to read about the uh, seraphim, there's not many places in the Bible to read about them. Not unless you go to Enoch. Not unless you go to the Apocrypha, not unless you go into a little bit in the Septuagint, but okay, you just have your King James Bible there. Let's just stick to that. That's okay. We got enough right there. We have enough. We don't have to go outside of the King James. Just because I have the books doesn't mean I spend a lot of time in them, but I will, I will, they're reference books for me. They're just references. That's all. Isaiah 6, 2. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings with twain. That means two. He covered his face with twain. That means two more. He covered his feet. And with twain, the last two, he did fly. So we have, they have six wings. And in Numbers 21, 6, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people and much people of Israel died. They are the fallen seraph, seraphim, fiery serpents, six wings. That's why I call, I just call them dragons. That's what they look like. They look like dragons. All right, let's let's uh, look at the last verse here. Uh, Deuteronomy eight fifteen. Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water? Who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint? All right. So the gen so so okay, right? Mystery solved. I hope it, I hope this mystery is so solved for you that you're not left unaware when these angels start entertaining your sky above you and that you have the full armor of God on you and you know what kind of spiritual warfare, in other words, you know what your sword is, you know what the truth of the word of God is and you know how to say it as though it's seared in your consciousness and, and tattooed on your heart. You've got to have the word of God in you. You have to have the word of God in you. What are you going to do when these dragons... Well, I don't know. Are they are they 20 feet, 30 feet, 100 feet long? Maybe. There's only one thing that combated. It. It's the word of God. That's your sword. That's your sword. Don't, you don't need a real sword. Your sword is the word of God. So the church needed you to not know this. Sorry. Um, but, but, you know, they've, they've invested over 2,000 years in this secret. For this timeline, for the timeline you're in, because your pastors, they they will be their heads will be in the sand. Don't come looking at me. Don't come asking me. I don't I have no idea what's going on here. This is what is included in my training. Actually, the devil and hell wasn't in, or demons wasn't included in their training. The one guy, the one pastor Howard, who died and went to hell. His cemetery training. Did not include any of that. I don't know how he read the Bible through and through and didn't pick up on it. But, you know, the word demon is not actually in the Bible. If you don't know what you're looking for, unclean spirit, the word legion. If you don't know the many ways in which demons are called something other than demon. Because if you go to the concordance, demon's not there. It's just not there. And if you look at, there's like 13 different names for Satan. 13. Do you see how easy it is for cemetery training to gloss over, to, to blot out, 
or just don't explain. And there you're lived unawares. <laughs> I'm just going to go with that. There you are left unawares. So I think we're out of time here. Just know that what we are told in Genesis was that the serpent in the garden was cursed and was told to crawl on his belly. It doesn't say that his fallen angels were cursed and crawled on their belly. So do they still have their wings? Are they still upright? Do they still, I know they have their supernatural powers. Is it diminished? Maybe. These are things that you need to ask yourself and you need to be prepared for so you're not caught with your head in the sand. So you have some working knowledge and every single day you kind of build on that working knowledge. You're like, I want to look more into this. I want to look at some reference books. What, what can I get to know about this? What does it say in all the artwork, especially in Egypt or Samaria? When these things were interfacing and interacting because they could, because the world they lived in, it was easy for them to do. They ruled that world. They don't, now they have to rule silently, right? They're the swamp. They're the deep state. They got to do it from underground or from space. So what we do know, thankfully, they are the tares. And in Matthew 13, 30, they will be bundled up and put into the fire. And we will be the seed in the barn, Haggai 2.19 tells us. So again, just a reminder, Daniel 2.43 was going on in his day and before his day and after his day. It's not something to come. It's something that has always been happening since Adam had to be kicked out of the enclosed garden. That's what Eden means, enclosed garden. Adam 2.43, and they will mingle their seed with men. All right, potters, that's why we stay in the word. Amen.